power just went out and the emergency alert system is warning that it may not be back on for a long time. Was this a localized weather event that caused this outage? Maybe it was a cyber attack. Maybe it was even an electromagnetic pulse from a high altitude nuclear weapon. You never know. One thing is for sure, millions of urbanized people are dependent on electricity for their survival. Refrigeration is a luxury that relies on this electrical grid. Without it, most of our food will most certainly spoil in a relatively short period of time. So today on the channel, we're going to discuss a quintessential survival skill that has been practiced for more than 200 years to ensure that you don't die if and when times get difficult. So let's get to it. All right, guys, back again with, uh, what's her face over here? Gardening in Canada came in to show us how to can some food. We've done videos on water bath canning, not me, but a friend of mine, Make Ready Missy, did a video on this channel previously about water bath canning. You're gonna use water bath canning for what kind of foods? Acidic. Highly acidic foods, and you're going to use a pressure canner for what kind of foods? Alkaline foods. Alkaline foods or low acidic foods. Her and her fancy science words. You should Wait. probably clarify something. What's up? If you add vinegar to your canning process, so if you water bath can like pickling, yeah. if the recipe says pickling, technically that's acidic. So if you do beans and you pickle them, you could do them a water bath canner, you do not do them the pressure canner. Okay. If you don't want that vinegar taste or that pickled taste, because to me every pickled tastes the same regardless, yeah. you would do it in here. So you could do pickled carrots, pickled beans in a water bath counter. You do not need the pressure counter for that one. Let's get this out of the way right from the get-go. This is a sensitive topic for some people. I'm talking about you, Botulism Betty. You know who you are. Doesn't matter how well you make a canning video, somebody is gonna complain <laughs> that you did it wrong. <laughs> yeah. So we're just getting into this out of the way right from the get-go. Not everybody's gonna survive SHTF. So Ashley from Gardening in Canada is gonna show you one method on how to do this, but I would encourage you to go and do a bit more research just to make sure it's 110% safe. You guys know me, I'm a freeze dry guy. It's simple, it's easy. Disgusting. It's absolutely delicious. If you're you know, one of these purists over here, you have an issue with freeze dried because you've never really eaten much freeze dried food, have you? You gave me one package and I'm not gonna lie, it's still sitting in my cupboard. I'm gonna save it for the apocalypse. So you haven't tried it yet? <laughs> so you you can't judge it if you I haven't have tried it. I have when I went camping, like Grail's hike and stuff. What kind? Uh, Mountain House, okay. whatever they yeah. sell at Cabela's or whatever. Yeah. See, if you're that picky, you know, your survivability is low anyways. <laughs> So you might as well just throw in the towel it's now. It's the water thing for me. This guy's gonna be melting snow while I'm eating. If I don't have to go and hunt the food and trap it, and all I gotta do is pour some lukewarm water on it, we'll do that. Okay, so what do we need in order to pressure can foods? Obviously we need a pressure canner. This is an all-American pressure canner. We sell these at CanadianPreparedness.com. I'm gonna be brutally honest, I've never used one in my life. I don't know how to use it, that's why she's here. And we also need some jars. And I think there's a variety of tools that we, you were supposed to bring, but you didn't. And it, she did that intentionally, so I burned myself pulling the hot jars out of the- I mean, we're really trying to do like a survival situation here. Right. Yeah. You're like trying to get me toughened up because she thinks mm -hmm. I'm a city boy. Get the calluses going. Right. He has none. Sure, right. hey, look at this. There's none, soft as a baby's ass. Enough chitter chatter. What are we doing first? Okay, so if you're doing a warm can, so you pre-cooked your meat, or you're doing like some sort of soup or something, all recipes, if you choose to can something and you wanna can a chili or a stew or whatever the case is, go find the government approved recipe for it. So USDA, Agriculture, Agri-Foods Canada, they have approved recipes. There's canning books with approved recipes. Usually at the bottom of them, they'll say, approved canning recipe. Okay. So that's the one thing you should trust the government on. Our university, they have an entire food science section. So yeah. all these things are tested. Yeah. The test times are the times, the temps are the temps, like don't go over, don't go under. You go over, everything turns to mush. You go under and you run the risk of getting very, very ill. Okay, so we're gonna open our jars. Okay, we're gonna open our jars. Yes, and now 
we're cold packing, so we don't have to preheat our jars or anything like that. If you were doing like a hot pack, so pre-cooked foods, yeah. you would put those in the dishwasher or in your sink and actually heat them. These, we don't have to, but keep in mind, most dishwashers have a sterilized setting. You'd wanna use the sterilized setting if you're using that. So that's only if we're using cooked food. Cooked food, you wanna heat your jars. If you put cold food into cold jars, it's fine. If you put cold food into a hot jar, the jar will crack. If you put hot food into a cold jar, jar will crack. Right. How long will a good jar last? Is there any jars you recommend? I, okay, I like the burn, 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 that's the Canadian brand. These Harvest ones are good too. The seals on these, I do find the name brand ones to be a better seal. Yeah. The cheap ones you buy off Amazon. Like 100 so the of them seal in bags. here, you got to make sure you have a good stash of these. Dean yes. from Marcopia, we were talking about barter items the other day. That and is he was talking item. about how, you know, this will be like currency. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a currency in fall. Like when all the gardeners are harvesting their stuff, you can sell these for so much. You'd be shocked how much people will pay for how many? How fall. many times can you use that? One. Okay. So why would you pay more than... The amount because of, if you have an entire garden full yeah. and the stores are sold out, which anyone who's watching who cans will agree with me. So I'm going to stock out. up on those things. Seriously, do yeah. it. Okay, so we're going to open up all the jars. Ooh, jeez. <laughs> so typically you would have a funnel for this. Another thing I left at home. Yeah, she said, hey, I'll come show you how to can. And she, she wasn't going to bring anything. How much am I putting in here? A go lot. Right to the top. Yeah, so what you'll look for in the recipe is headspace. That's just a reference to how much space there is from the top of the jar. So the collar to the top is one inch and that's what we're aiming for is one inch. But we also are going to be packing these. Okay, we gotta fill 10 of these. If we don't have enough for 10, we can just do jars with water. Well, we have to fill, it has to all be full or else they'll oh, rattle. Yeah, you don't want them to rattle. If they okay. bang against each other, they'll- Well, should I just put a little less in some or? No, no, we wanna fill them. Like what is the reason that we have to fill them all the way? It, to reduce air, you want the okay. less air in the thing. And that's part of the reason why we're pushing. So we'll double check. Well, why didn't you just say that? What? Less air. That's all you had to say. <laughs> so one thing we could have done that we didn't do is we could have seasoned these. So you can put salt in, you can put like- Marinade? Uh, no. Okay, so I'm not gonna say to do that. Spices only, like dry spice. Was... You gotta follow the USD. I'm not gonna say do what you want. Right. I refuse. Fair enough. We don't wanna get sued by botulism, Betty. And how long is this meat gonna last for? That's what we should be talking about in the first place. Because we need this to last for at least 50 years. Yeah, so I'm not, <laughs> uh, I'm not a great long-term prepper. I'm an active, prepper. Okay. So when you're canning, you're not preparing to eat this in 25 years. You're preparing to eat this next week. <laughs> how, long, how long will it last? That's what we want to know. 18 months is the recommended value. I'm pretty can. sure this can last longer than 18 months. It definitely can. But don't believe that. Don't. Yeah, yeah. don't actually do that. Okay. So meat, we are not adding any water to. Okay. At this point, you could add salt if you wanted. Just, just a little on top. Allen's vinegar. We're pouring that in here? No, don't, please don't. Can you grab a, uh, like a, a square? A square? Yeah, be environmentally friendly here. Hey. We have to be. Come and take it. <gasps> she hasn't even had her first drink yet. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna wipe the rims. This is not something you need to do. Some people think you need to boil these lids. You do not need to boil these lids. Okay. I am just doing this as a precaution because you were you were a little gropey with the lids. Gropey. Okay, so now we're gonna screw these on. We're not doing anything to, before we screw them on? No, other than the sanitization that we just did. And we're gonna have to do, what, the other five in water, right? Yeah, so we're gonna put water in the remainder. We don't have to put the lids on, so we don't have to waste the lids in this process, but we would, we can just fill them with water I and see. then weight them down inside of the, the container because yeah, we don't want them rattling around. Does this need to be tight? No. No? Jeez. <laughs> Don't, it'll wreck the jar. Okay, so if you do what you just did and like just crank it on, yeah. you your air can escape and so it won't seal. It won't basically vacuum seal it. Okay, so what you wanna do, so if you put this on, so yeah. you have it. 
Just put it on lightly. What I do, and then I just lightly, like two fingers grab the jar, and that's it. Wow. I don't like, no, just two fingers, that's it. Once that's at its max, I'm done. Okay. Like these rings come off immediately after we're done canning. What do you mean they come off? You do not store with your rings on. You store without really? your rings. Yeah. So your rings, <laughs> yeah. If you leave your rings on, what happens is, and I've had this happen before, is these will let go and then they'll reseal because the rings are on. Once you take the ring off, it, the suction is so strong it'll never come off. You need to be able to, before these go in your pantry and you say good enough, you need to be able to pick them up by just holding the seal. But don't you risk loosening the seal when you do that? No. No, that okay. seal should not be able to break until you take a church, it's called a church key or a knife or a fork, whatever yeah. the case is, and pry it open. That's the only time so it should let go. So when you open that, does it like pop or does it like... Does nothing. Does nothing, it just... It just sits. There's no sound or anything? Zero. With the pressure canners, I find you can hear them popping as it's sitting here. So like, as things are cooling down, you'll hear like little... And what is that tool that sticks on there? There's a little doodad that sticks That's up. this one. So this is, is where... That? The recipes are very important. So your altitude of your environment yeah. will determine what weight you're using. So we're in the prairies, we're using 10. Okay, so that has little indication on there, five, 10, and 15. Yes. So what, when I put this on here, what, it's gonna start to wobble or something, or what happens? It'll, it'll vent through, so it'll kind of shake and stuff, and it'll allow the pressure to come out to maintain the 10 PSI. And uh, you always wanna watch on this gauge here that this is at 10. Yeah, it smells pretty good. Do you not yeah. cook with coconut oil? I do not cook. So how would I cook with coconut oil? Of course you don't cook. Does that shock me? Absolutely not. I can cook freeze-dried food. So I'm gonna rub the edge of this. What happens if we don't do this? It won't seal properly and you'll get venting out the sides and then technically your pressure and your temperature will not be correct. Okay. Now these machines can be dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, you don't wanna, you know, stand really close around it while it's doing its thing or how can you go wrong? It's basically if you don't have the clips on properly okay. is the concern. The All-American is like really clipped. Mine's not even close to this many clips. It's like okay. literally just a turn and I've never had it do anything wrong. This one is super safe. Get this, 10% off. And you could technically do this over top of an open fire uh, propane stove. This is electric. I do oh. mine on my oven top and some people are blown away by that, but I've never had my oven top crack because of it. So let's do like two to three inches of water in the bottom. Yeah. How much more? Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, and then just a little bit of vinegar, like a... There, I'll let you do that part. Okay. Cause... And so the only reason this isn't necessary but if you get a cloudy film on your jars, then add the vinegar. Where we are, like our city, yeah. is cloudy water. Like it'll cloud oh, your jars. okay, I see. So it depends on the, the water source. If it's a... Uh, yeah, if it has calcium carbonate in it, pretty much North America has a lot of calcium carbonate in our water. Calcium carbonate. Yes. I'll pronounce that for them. It affects your garden as well, your calcium carbonate. Adjust your pH. It, causes it to become more alkaline. That stuff you can learn on her channel, guys. Yes. She knows a lot about that kind of stuff. I'll give her that much. I know. What else do we need for this? That's it. So um, you... I can't fit jars in the middle, but you do have the ribbed plate. So, cause it has the ribs, it's not gonna jump around. If it didn't. We can't just stick two there. No, don't force it. Don't force it, don't force it. So if you had a shorter one, you could. That's for stacking. So what we could do, guys, in this amazing contraption, we could theoretically do a whole other row. Yeah. So you're sure that this is not gonna move around? No, or... you have the ribbed ones. So okay. some of these don't have the ribbing on them and they're just flat and they will move around. So Presto canners don't come with the ribs. And so they, the jars will shuffle too much. This is a grandma hack. If you ever have empty jars in your house, the minute you eat meat out of this, you immediately put water in it and you can your water, just in case. You ever water went out, something happened. Have but won't you have to use a lid then? So that's the only scenario where she will reuse a lid because you don't have oh, to okay. seal seal. Right, right. You just fill it up with water and put it in storage. Makes sense. These teeth, there's three of them, all have to be on and they are. Just double check, yeah. double check them. 
All right, so now we can. Put it all on there, yeah. Now we can start screwing it in. So how much tension do we got to put on these? Watts? Enough, yeah. This is what you need a man for, right? No. <laughs> Not really. You know those outdoor propane cookers? That's like the Cadillac way of doing it because it's like really even heat and stuff. Obviously yeah. make sure your propane tanks are, are full and it's not in a, a windy location. I use my oven because my oven is controllable. So that's my preferred method. But basically all we're gonna do now is we're gonna wait and leave this till this starts spewing out hot steam. Yeah. And then we wait for 10 minutes after it's venting. So this, that's what we call venting. So what do we use this for? That doesn't get placed on until the, after the 10 minutes of venting. Okay. And the timer for the, the recipes, 45 minutes is how long we are going to leave this in here for with the weight on. And then after it does the 45 minutes with that, yeah. we're gonna leave it. Okay. So you want to leave it until the weight drops, the pressure gauge is at zero and you never remove the top or even attempt to remove the top until this is zeroed out. Some people will try to speed cool by lifting the weight and letting it uh, really quickly vent. What happens is A, you can break a jar, which is less than ideal or crack it, and then it's no good for storage anymore. Yeah. And then you can also get something called siphoning. And this is particularly true for soups, stews, vegetables canned with water. Mm -hmm. It's when the water gets pulled out and it goes into the, con into the bucket and it'll leave your jars kind of like half full. Now you can keep these jars and you can eat from them. It's just, they don't store as well for as long and they look a little goofy as well. So that's something to keep in mind. That's what they call quick cooling. You wanna avoid quick cooling. So you just leave this on and wait for this to zero out. It may take hours and that's completely okay. Like just let it sit. Meat, borscht, things with color will discolor in a pressure cooker. Again, completely normal. No one. What do you mean by discolor? Like the. It looks different. So oh, okay. they went yeah, in bright yeah. red. It's yeah. gonna come out looking cooked after it's completed. You don't have to put it in a microwave. You don't have to recook it. You can just eat it directly out of the jar cold if you wanted to. It's completely cooked. It's a finished meal type thing that's canned. So just keep that in mind. They won't look as pretty as what it went in like. Same for vegetables. So the vegetables tend to discolor and kind of get more of a bland look to them. Now, if you're into color and you like colorful food, which I am, zinc is an additive. You can get a zinc additive for canning and it will preserve that color. All right. So what we got going on here is this thing is now aggressively venting steam. How long do we need to let it do this? Why do we need to let it do this? And how do we know when it's ready to be plugged with the, uh, the weight? So it's okay for it to take some time to get there. So if you're waiting 30 minutes, that's normal. Like okay. even at home, even if you have like your normal oven or propane heater or whatever. So, so yeah, we're, we start a timer on the watch for 10 minutes and we want to only start the timer once it's aggressively doing this. So it's gonna spit, sputter, steam's gonna start, stop, all that fun stuff, you're going to wait until you get a solid stream before you start the timer. Very important. Okay. You don't want to start it before it's ready to go. The PSI is going to depend on your elevation and your recipe. So again, just follow your elevation recipe, all that sort of stuff. And so what's our elevation here? 1500 feet or something? Something like that. Yeah. 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 We're right in the middle of the prairies here. So, so we're doing 10. Okay. 10 PSI. And this just literally sits on top. So now if you have a wobbler, it'll kind of do like a hula So version. right now the pressure is going to start building. Yep. And this gauge will start climbing to 10. So when it, when it starts building to 10, this weight might come up a little bit and it's going to start venting to keep it at that pressure. Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah. It'll let the air escape as needed. Yeah. Okay. So it should self-regulate. That's Correct. the idea. Correct. Yeah. Not all systems will self-regulate. Correct. No. Right. Cause no. what happens if we go into the caution zone here? Will this thing just explode? Oh yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, if you, <laughs> if you go overboard, it could explode. Um, what happens if you overheat it, it's, it's not as severe as if you underheat. So underheat, you could run the risk of you know, contamination, hurting yourself. Right. But with the, botulism. Yes, with botulism, okay. yeah. Uh, but overheating, you just end up with like really mushy food and it's gross. Okay. <laughs> is the concern there. Um, and you could run the risk of busting jars as well. So it's not so much an issue of this thing exploding. No, no, there's quite a few warning signs before you ever get to that point. Okay. 
So for this, we want to wait till this hits the 10 PSI on the gauge itself. And then once it hits 10 PSI on the gauge is when we start the 45 minute timer or the 90 minute timer, whatever your cooking range is for your recipe. So you have to wait till it hits the 10. It, the timer does not start when you pop this and the timer starts when this hits the correct pressure. After that's done and you've watched it for the correct amount of time, you want to check on this on a regular basis. You don't set it and forget it. It's one of those things where you would do it you would start this in the morning when you're gonna go clean the house type thing. Like you wanna watch it, make sure that nothing is getting too high, too low, going too crazy, um, that sort of thing. All right, so what else do we gotta do then? We let it sit for 45 minutes, we let it cool down. Shut your heater off and then Shut touch the heater nothing. Off to touch nothing. And then you're gonna wait for this gauge to hit zero. Yeah. Once that hits absolute zero, that is the only time where you can start releasing this stuff. Okay. If you do it before that, you are going to hurt yourself. Like what's gonna happen? Well, first off, it could blow off. Now, this one has a safety feature where there's three clamps kind of holding it in place, so it's yes. gonna only blow off so far. When you take this off, pro tip, do not lift it this way, always lift it towards you. So when you lift this handle, pull this way. Yeah, so you don't get burned in the face. Yeah, because I've done it where I've lifted this way before and I singed That's why you're right Yeah, that's where it all went awry. That's how that started. After that's completed, all you're gonna do is you're gonna set them on the counter. I like to wait till overnight. So I let them sit out. I will wipe them down with like a vinegar water mix, just 50% water, 50% vinegar. You may end up with some siphoning that happens just because that's what sometimes yeah. happens. It ends up with like kind of like a sticky grime on the outside of the jar and things like ants or bugs mm. like to go and so so just do like a nice minimize cleaning. pests. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. do like a good cleaning of your jars. And then your final step is actually gonna be removing your rings so you're gonna pop the rings off and then you want to actually lift the jars themselves by just this portion so, so this is gonna be on here it's gonna be firmly adhered to there and if you can't lift it and if it pops off you gotta eat it right away so we take these lids off why so you should never store with the rings because you could a get a false seal meaning you didn't properly check the seal to begin with yeah. and the second reason is because over time these are only meant to last for a certain period of time and then they will let go naturally yeah. if it lets go and this is cinched on top it can actually reseal itself the problem with that is that bacteria and stuff has, has gone, gone in. into yeah, or air, your seal. Yeah. yeah. And then you can get sick. And again, remember botulism is a silent killer. This is why you just do freeze dry guys. Like this is too f***ing complicated. And the other thing, so the other thing is, is you, you shouldn't stack these. So like on your shelf, you should never stack them on top of each other. You know what you can stack? <laughs> freeze dried food. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Guys, in all seriousness, go check out her channel. She's got a great variety of content when it comes to everything from how to grow anything, anywhere. She's the one. If she can teach me, she can teach anybody. I'll give her that much. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com where you'll find high quality survival gear at the best prices, no junk and no gimmicks. Use discount code prepping gear for 10% off. Don't forget the strong survive, but the prepared thrive. Stay safe.